so I'm having some external work done on my filming studio, but I really need to complete a review of the ASUS PA32DC OLED monitor before I have to return the sample. No problem at all. Because of how portable the OLED monitor is, I could simply carry it out from my studio, across my garden, and into another room for preliminary calibration and measurement. Now, when you measure any consumer OLED television, the HDR peak brightness would gradually creep up over time, due to the OLED panel heating up. However, when I measured the ASUS ProArt PA32DC monitor, the HDR peak brightness stayed impressively stable over time, not even increasing by a couple of nits after 30 seconds. Also, even after displaying a peak white window in HDR for 10 seconds, then switching to a full field grey slide, there's not even the slightest hint of image retention on the ProArt PA32DC. This class leading stability is thanks to the 31.5 inch True RGB OLED panel with 3480x3160 resolution sourced from Japanese vendor JOLED which is the same screen found on the LG 32EP950 which has proven increasingly popular among creative professionals. Targeting the same demographic market, ASUS has implemented a number of design features on the PA32DC, making it more appealing for on-set production without sacrificing any of the conveniences provided by a typical desktop monitor. Two metal feet are implemented at the bottom of the frame, and there is a built-in carrying handle as well, so the OLED monitor can be moved and set up anywhere in a quick and easy manner. Alternatively, the feed can be flipped in to be flush with the panel, allowing the screen to be mounted on the supplied pedestal stand for desktop monitor use. The OSD buttons are located on the front of the bezel to provide easier access, just like what you would find on a reference mastering monitor. There is a protrusion at the top of the PA32DC, housing a calorimeter that can automatically flip down and read a patch on the OLED monitor using the ProArt calibration software from ASUS. Note that upon power up from coal, there would be an audible mechanical noise from the housing for a few seconds, due to the motor checking if the calorimeter is in the right position. Because we already have our own reference grade meters, we used them to measure our ASUS PA32DC review sample, and found that out of the box, the grayscale surprisingly carried a green tint across all picture presets, which persisted even after performing auto calibration using the inbuilt calorimeter, suggesting that ASUS may have adopted a different white point to D65. In SDR mode, near black gamma was also lower than the target out of the box, causing shadow detail to look brighter than reference. Although ASUS has promised to address this in a future firmware update, of course, these out of the box inaccuracies can be rectified using professional calibration softwares such as Kalman or Colorspace, which are able to write color parameters directly into the display, allowing us to achieve very accurate colors with an average delta error of below 1 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured and no inaccuracy exceeding Delta Error 2, translating to an extremely close match in SDR terms to a Sony VVM HSX310 costing nearly 10 times the price. Of course, the Sony HSX310 dual-layer LCD monitor pulled ahead significantly when it came to HDR, being capable of 1000 nits full screen. HDR peak brightness on the ASUS PA32DC measured 530 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point, and around 260 nits full fill. But impressively, the monitor could exceed 500 nits even up to 50% window size, representing the most relaxed ABL or automatic brightness limiter circuitry we've seen among large-sized OLED displays excluding phone and laptop screens. The company has even implemented a uniform brightness setting in the user menu that caps peak brightness at roughly 260 nits across the board. Though we would rather disable uniform brightness and tap into the 530 nit peak brightness up to 50% window size for HDR grading. Otherwise, there would be more clipping of bright highlight detail with a dimmer picture. Talking of which, 
the PQ clip setting mimics the behavior of a reference mastering monitor. Hard clipping at the monitor's peak brightness with accurate PQ UTF tracking along the way. The PQ optimized and the PQ basic settings are more suitable for HDR content consumption, utilizing slightly different tone mapping algorithms to retain more specular highlight detail. Now, to better understand the different tone mapping algorithms implemented by various manufacturers, I've started taking some algorithm lessons on Brilliant.org, an interactive website that helps you learn math, science, and computer science in a hands-on manner without having to spend years and a fortune at a college. I believe that by gaining a better understanding of the underlying science, I can make better, more authoritative YouTube videos when reviewing displays to help you make informed purchase decisions. Brilliant has thousands of lessons with new content added monthly, even some on neural networks which I aspire to work towards, given that more and more high-end displays these days are using AI processing. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash HDTV test or click on the link in the YouTube description below. The first 200 to sign up from this link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks again for your support. Okay, either the PQ optimized or the PQ basic setting produced varying results with 1000 nit and 4000 nit HDR material respectively. But if you are using this OLED monitor for the purpose of HDR grading, then PQ clip is the right choice as long as you keep the grade under 530 nits. If you need to grade HDR content brighter than that, then you should really get your hands on a dual-layer LCD monitor capable of higher peak brightness. Otherwise, you are just going to be guessing and can't really trust the image shown on the PA32DC. Come to think of it, perhaps the growing popularity of JOLED monitors such as the LG 32EP950 among colorists who had to work from home due to the pandemic might be partly responsible for the increase in dark HDR grades on Netflix, Disney+, Apple TV, and HBO Max, which has a tendency to trigger unwanted auto-dimming on consumer OLED televisions. Just like the LG EP950, the ASUS ProArt PA32DC is much more affordable than the Sony HSX310 monitor, carries a significantly thinner and lighter form factor, doesn't emit any fan noise even in HDR mode, and delivers superior viewing angles to any dual-layer LCD monitor. So studios can hardly be blamed for buying a bunch of these JOLED monitors and sending them out to creative professionals working from home for remote editing or grading. The ASUS ProArt PA32DC uses a true RGB subpixel layout without color filter, reaching almost 100% of DCI-P3 color space in UV terms, and 80% of Rec2020. Bright uniformity was excellent on our review unit, exhibiting no dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting on full field gray slides. In terms of dark uniformity, there were several thick vertical bands just above black, but they didn't rear their ugly heads in real-world moving video content, despite us specifically looking out for it. Even though its JOLED panel is only 60Hz, the ASUS PA32DC displayed 24 frames per second content correctly without any noticeable telescenic judder in slow panning shots by refreshing at 48Hz. I've covered HDR earlier in this video, but on our review sample, Frequently, the OLED monitor wouldn't automatically switch from calibrated SDR user mode to HDR mode upon detection of HDR content, requiring us to switch manually to restore the correct HDR presentation. Native 10-bit gradation was very good, with little to no posterization seen in the skies of the 4K Blu-ray of The Martian. In fact, 10-bit gradation was one of the key advantages of the ASUS PA32DC head over the LG 32EP950, which manifested more blockiness in this moving quantization HDR10 test pattern developed by Stacey Spears of Spears and Mansell fame, as well as more posterization in the skies of the Martian. Otherwise, the ASUS ProArt PA32DC features HLG and Dolby Vision support. At the time we filmed this video, 
We're still waiting for a firmware update to add Dolby Vision support to the monitor. As for HLG, you will need to disable the uniform brightness setting to achieve the highest peak brightness above 500 nits. Otherwise, the PA32DC will be capped to around 260 nits, which is hardly HDR. Also, the eagle eye among you may have spotted that the HLG EOTF tracked brighter than reference. The ASUS PA32DC seemed to be operating at a fixed system gamma of 1 in HLG mode, likely due to chipset limitation, instead of an adjusted system gamma tailored to display luminance and surround luminance, as specified in BBC's white paper on HLG. Both the ASUS PA32DC and the LG 32EP950 carry a semi-matte screen coating with barely any anti-glare properties. And even though the ASUS maintained slightly deeper blacks with less navy hue than the LG, perhaps owing to a later panel production run, it would still benefit from the supplied attachable monitor hood to prevent ambient light from falling directly on the screen. To sum up, the ASUS ProArt PA32DC is a high-quality OLED monitor suitable for SDR and to a lesser extent HDR grading, appealing to those who can't stretch their budget all the way to a Sony HX310 monitor for cost and other reasons, and so it receives our highly recommended award. Compared to the LG EP950 which uses the same JOLED panel, the ASUS delivers superior 10-bit gradation, especially near black and carries many production-ready design features. Although LG Electronics has recently released an updated BP95E series with inbuilt colorimeter and detachable monitor hood included, the LG EP950 appears to be better calibrated from factory out of the box, and its price has come down significantly over the course of more than one year from launch. Despite news of JOLED's potential bankruptcy, ASUS has provided reassurance that it has secured enough stock to satisfy end users, so we will probably see more and more PA32DC adopted by colorists and other creative professionals, particularly as remote working become more widespread. We just hope that this doesn't accelerate the proliferation of excessively dark HDR grading such as in episode 7 of House of the Dragon, which we have analyzed in this video you can watch by clicking here. You won't believe how many nits the infamous beach scene has been graded to.